In this video, I will explain how Peltier elements work. I have been conducting research in my solar workshop into solar-powered Peltier-based systems. My goal is to learn what Peltier elements can do in the real world versus depending on theory. Peltiers have many different downsides, but they also have some advantages, and I think they can do more than a lot of people think. This video is part of a series about DIY solar power, refrigeration, and air conditioning research. Related content will be posted down in the description. In part one, I started by taking a look at Peltier elements. I created a pretty hasty experimental rig to gain some experience working with them. As part of my research, I also made a Peltier freezer prototype. The entire inside reached below freezing temperatures, which taught me a lot about what Peltiers can do. I am still working on this project. Now back to the air conditioning projects. For part two, I built a more powerful Peltier element air conditioner, which operates at higher power levels. Now for a really quick overview about the general theory behind Peltier elements. Let's take a brief look at Peltier elements. They have no moving parts themselves and are made of solid state junctions. In fact, they are semiconductors. To keep it simple, flowing a current across the Peltier moves or pumps heat from the cold side over to the hot side. But this comes at a cost. Moving heat also generates heat. Much like a compressor in a refrigerant based heat pump system, there is waste heat that gets generated. Although Peltiers are often said not to be efficient, the reality is they are quite efficient in having no moving parts, being affordable, being DC powered, and not requiring refrigerants or compressors. Despite having no moving parts, it's amazing that Peltier elements can literally take heat and move it from one side to the other, making them useful for a variety of purposes. The way they work is, if you move, let's say, one pound of heat out of your refrigerator through the Peltier, it'll put that heat on the hot side, requiring a fan or some method to dump the heat and get rid of it. However, they also generate extra heat while moving existing heat. This could be called waste heat. That extra heat will also appear on the hot side and has to be gotten rid of as well. In short, Peltiers require aggressive cooling of the hot side in order to work properly, because if you let all that heat stay there on the hot side and just build up, it will slow the process of cooling down. It can be challenging to get rid of all that extra heat. That's why I chose water cooling for all my experiments so far. For me, that's the best way to get rid of the excess heat, as I'm already familiar with pumps, radiators, fans, and hoses. It's pretty basic tech and easy to work with. Flowing water over the hot side of the Peltier and then outside through a radiator and fan is called heat exchange. You're picking up the heat from the Peltier, putting it into the water, which gets hot, and transporting that water outside through a radiator and using a fan to push the heat out into the external environment as quickly as possible. Well, that's the general idea anyway. These are all direct drive solar. This system is a lot more powerful than the last one, but I wanted to start small. I've scaled it up, and now I'm running uh, eight Peltier elements. Got the same DC converter over here with a fan because it gets too hot. And I've got the control panel to that. This is running another fan. This is running my water pump. This is measuring the temperature of the outlet air on the air conditioner. And this is measuring the uh, water tank, which is temporarily right over here. It's, it wouldn't stay that way. That's just for experimental reasons because I want access to the water. And also I can dip my thermometer in it pretty easily. You can see that it's 102.9. 102.9 degrees is really not that hot because outside it's nearly 100 degrees. However, you can tell the water is really warm. And for the Celsius folks, the water is 39.4 degrees, 39.5 degrees C. Now the air coming out of the air conditioner is 62.2 degrees Fahrenheit, and I've only been running this for a while. Celsius is 16.8 degrees on the outlet air. Here's the temporary setup for the air conditioner. I've got all the Peltiers on there wired up, and it's actually getting a lot of condensation, and it's really quite cold. Let's see what the temperature of that metal part is there. Okay, so the ambient is about 82 point something, 82.5. Let's move it over here. It's in the 40s, 42 to like 45. It didn't take very long for quite a bit of condensation to start building up in there. And it's part of the design that I'm gonna come up with is to drain the condensation away. But right now I'm just collecting it right there there's quite a lot of it. This hasn't taken very long at all. It's putting out quite a bit of condensation, so... Anyway, this will do for now. I can collect it, I hope. And then I'll figure out how to drain it later. 
currently reduced the power to 410 watts for just the Peltier elements themselves. That isn't very much, but I don't want to overdrive them. That would be a problem. The temperature of the air outlet is still about 60 degrees. 15.9 degrees Celsius. And the temperature of the water is, it has crept up a little bit. It's 106.5 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's 41.4 degrees Celsius. It is going up a little bit. However, remember, outside is very, very hot. Anyway, outside is the radiator setup. It's an updated one. I made it bigger. So let me go ahead and take you outside and show you that. So anyway, that radiator setup is much more powerful than the last one I had. Of course, it's definitely better to make them larger, but I'll get there. This is a phased experiment. Start at one step and move on to the next one. I think this right now is enough for me to experiment. It does put out lots of nice cold air. I'm impressed. It's clearly doing quite a good job. And the dehumidification is actually extremely good. Um, I'm very surprised how much water is in there and how quickly that appeared there. Very impressive. So this is absolutely doing what an air conditioner does. It's putting out cool air. It's also dehumidifying, which is very important. That's a big part of air conditioning. It's the moisture in the air that you want to get rid of, A number one. Lowering the temperature of the room, that's important also. Or at least controlling it, or it isn't too hot. But getting that moisture out of the air is going to help a person cool off a lot more easily when they're indoors. And that's what air conditioning is all about. I haven't yet gotten the Peltier elements working exactly the way I want, in order to invest that amount of effort to make a nicer looking end product. It's also not powerful enough. I want something more powerful. However, this is better than the last setup and it did teach me quite a bit about using LTA elements. I have noticed that the temperature of the outlet air is not stable. It does vary a little bit. I'm not terribly worried about that. Also, I'm not sure exactly what power level I'm going to be driving these LTA elements at. What this setup is gonna do for me is allow me to take note of what power levels work best and how much actual temperature drop I can get. It's about 80 degrees, 81 degrees in this room, and the air coming out of there is 20 degrees cooler, and there's quite a lot of it, enough to impress me. So this encourages me to carry on my work and see what else I can come up with. I just used this uh, syringe here to collect the condensation that I have picked up so far. It's quite a lot of water. This hasn't been running all that long, so... And not too long after I pick up all that water, you can see more is already coming out, quite a lot. Really, this thing is putting out quite a bit of condensation. I'm amazed. And you can see quite a bit more on the heat sinks there. So I have to work more on that and see what all I can do to make this more efficient. I'm planning to build a better one, but it takes money and time and everything, so it's not going to happen overnight, that's for sure. Okay, this is the phase two part of the Peltier element test. And we're currently pushing 622 watts, which is closer to what I wanted. Unfortunately, the sun is pretty well done for the day. It's starting to get dim, so I'm not getting as much power in as I'd like. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do a test, and I will try to pick this up again later. I'd like to get the wattage up a little bit higher. Well, currently I'm having difficulty keeping the water reservoir cool. 105.6 degrees Fahrenheit on the water, and that's hotter than I'd like it to be. It's not terrible, though. On the first group of Peltier elements, I'm pushing 384 watts, which is quite conservative, because I've pushed more than that. I've had them up to 430 to 450, but like I said, the sun is about done for today, and I'm getting all that I can. At the top is a second bank of Peltier elements. This is six of them, and at the bottom we have eight. So I have a total of 14 Peltier elements. And there's a significant amount of cool air coming out of this thing even though I'm not running it at full speed. Only 622 watts. It's a very nice amount of air that's coming out. Let's see how cold it is. I've got my thermocouple in there, and we're looking at about 59 degrees Fahrenheit. That's 15.2 C. But I'd really like to see better than that. 
on the bottom bank of eight Peltier elements, we're looking at about 55 degrees on the outlet air, which is pretty good. However, it's a little bit deceptive because it doesn't tell the whole story. The fact that a 55 degree air is coming out means that there's a certain amount of air flowing over the heatsink. That's really all it means. It doesn't really measure cooling power at all. This is a common misunderstanding. However, that air is nice and cold coming out, I can tell you that. It approaches what a normal air conditioner would put out. Let's go outside and take a look at the outdoor heat exchanger, which I have basically upgraded to something much more powerful. Just for reference, the air temperature inside the cabin, which is inside the solar workshop, is 79.9 degrees Fahrenheit. And that means we're getting a 24.4 degrees Fahrenheit split between the temperature of the air coming out of the Peltier element and the temperature of the cabin inside the solar workshop. Now despite the radiator and fan setup being a little bit inadequate for what I'm planning, it's actually holding its own here pretty well. 105 degrees. Fahrenheit for the reservoir water. Let's check the outdoor temperature. The temperature outside the solar workshop is 93.4 degrees Fahrenheit, which gives us an 11.6 degree split between the temperature of the outside air and the hot water, which is running in a loop through the cooling pumps. So I'd like to get that down a little bit, but still, considering what I'm pushing into that water, that's not bad. I will need a much bigger pump and a much bigger radiator as soon as possible because I plan to expand this setup based on the results so far. I like the way they work so far, and I do think I will be building a better, higher quality setup. But I'm not willing to put that much effort into it until I do these tests. Even though this setup is not getting quite as much sun as it was the last time I tested it, the amount of cold air coming out of here is really fantastic. It's starting to feel like more of an air conditioner, not just a little bit of cool air coming out. So I think I'm going to carry on with this test and build something a little bit more refined and advanced. I was not able to finish the last phase of the testing in time to make this video, so I just went ahead and uploaded it. I've run into a lot of difficulties in the process, which slowed the work down. As soon as I have something presentable, I will certainly upload it and share the results. All related video and playlist links are posted in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.